So now we quickly glance through the typical different uh, so-called structural ceramics functions ceramics their examples just to okay wow all these things are possible now let's look at uh, the structure specifically atomic scale structure of ceramics we're talking about structure of ceramics at atomic scale that's what you learned a little bit in uh, material engineering class we said okay typically when we think of atoms are spheres then typically there are two well depending on how you view it three arrangement the first one on the left every atoms arranged in highly periodic fashion throughout the material these we call them crystalline specifically single crystalline make sense that's what you learned atoms arranged in highly periodic fashions okay single crystal here i'm giving an image for a cut beautiful piece of single crystal diamond okay and these type of single crystal ceramic material they people use them for only special application gems diamond optical parts special optical parts or for semiconductor wafers right for silicon wafers or some other special optical wafer then the other one everything is what more or less disorganized random they are still bonded but uh, do i have so-called a long range periodicity no these are people call them amorphous or people call them glass glassy okay these material atoms don't align up in long range order people use them for containers right here people melt glass to make glass bottles okay for containers for building applications or for optical chemical parts for glass and then between these a slight variation of crystalline i have something like this which people call polycrystalline as you see this part is you can call it one small single crystal this part is another single crystal in between one single crystal and another small single crystal these region people call them so-called a green boundary repeat with me green boundary it's between most ceramic material are so-called polycrystalline which means the material itself contains many small grains many small single crystals between them i have green boundaries okay and that's for most ceramics for china wire and for many other stuff and that's kind of the focus for this class polycrystalline ceramic that's the focus for this class okay and then when we go beyond the atomic scale level we're going to talk about the microstructure of ceramics micro means large or small small smaller than what smaller than what your eye can see directly make sense previously we talked about atomic scale structure how atoms are arranged but for material or specifically ceramic material quite often people talk about microstructure something you have to see with a magnifying glass or most likely a optical microscope okay microstructure of ceramics here i'm showing what powder brown carbide b4c powder synthesized by one of my students you saw them okay both are powders left right okay you see mm, let me tell you they are both pure almost pure boron carbide pretty pure above 95 98 percent but what's different the scale bar is similar but what's different well ah, <laughs> the appearance which we call microstructure also called a micromorphology make sense microstructure or micromorphology are different these are powders when you do different synthesis different processing they look different in the structure microstructure not atomic structure microstructure they are different which are important for subsequent processing okay and then here i'm showing 
a ceramic part sintered. It's actually a composite nickel oxide YC and YC bilayer. If you look at the cross section, you see it more clearly. Do you see the bilayer? One layer is here, it's porous or non porous? A kind of non porous, pretty dense, right? And then I have the remaining, which is uh, highly porous. Not only porous, I have large, large pores. Okay large intentionally created pores. So this is so-called co-sintered bilayer structure, which we also call microstructure, 10 micron. Can you see it with your eye? Not really, 10 micron is hard to see with your naked eye, right? But then you can use some optical microscope or scanning electron microscope to see their microstructure. And these different microstructure means certain things. We have certain reasons that we need a layer, dense layer on the top to do certain function for certain device. Okay. So that's that's this one. And the microstructure, we said sometimes we are concerned with green or crystal features. What's the size, shape, and distribution? This crystal has that uh, so called a dagger shape, right? But uh, these crystals are pretty much so called a uniaxial. The same dimension everywhere. Green features, they are similar. Pores, do you see pores? Right? Pore features, the size, the shape, the distribution. All these are important to material. And other uniformity, non-uniformity, impurity phases. All these are so-called microstructure for material. Okay? So 